a wood elf overhaul, fancy forests, and reimagined hiding mechanics. All that and more with the Total War Warhammer 2 December 2020 update, arriving alongside the Twisted and Twilight Lords pack. We've got heaps of changes to get through, from campaign overhauls, brand new regions, exciting features, and plenty more. Before we kick off, it's worth noting what new content is free. Warhammer and Warhammer 2 owners can expect Vortex and Mortal Empires campaign map updates, as well as Old World updates. Warhammer, Warhammer 2 and Realm of the Wood Elves DLC owners can expect an additional free Legendary Lord playable in Mortal Empires, as well as new units, unit variants, and hero and spell laws. Now that's cleared up, we can get started by taking a look at the biggest change, the Wood Elves campaign. Put bluntly, we're revamping the whole thing. Amber's no longer required for recruitment or building, nor is it gained from occupying settlements. So good riddance. What do Wood Elves love? forests. Campaign progress is now tracked by forest health. Once enough forest health has been accumulated, a ritual of rebirth can be performed. Completing rituals grants a bunch of cool rewards. Beam me up Orion. Wood Elves can now teleport between magical forests, making moving between key settlements much easier. Within those magical forests, you'll find encounters. These unique Wood Elf events will offer narrative choices to shape the way you play through your campaign, and sometimes result in thematic battles. There are further updates to technologies, buildings, skills, followers events, and traits, so be sure to check out the patch notes blog linked in the description. Next up, new regions. Griffin Wood. This gloomy forest is situated within the bustling empire's borders, specifically Ostermark, perfect for couples looking for an atmospheric getaway, and Mortal Empire's exclusive. Forest of Gloom. Don't let the name put you off, this goblin-infested hellhole is found due west of the always charming Karaz Akarak, great for adventurers, and Mortal Empire's exclusive. The Sacred Pools. Found in central Lustria, these shimmering pools are host to exotic, tourist-welcoming natives, available to both campaigns. The Witchwood. Very witchy, very woody. Located in the remote mountains of Nagarund, again available to both campaigns. Some quickfire campaign changes and new features. Aspects. Dryads, Treekin, and Treemen in Durthu and Dryka's factions will have access to Aspects, purchasable upgrades that will shift a unit's role by increasing certain stats at the cost of others. Spites. Ancient Treemen and Branch Wraiths in all Wood Elf factions now draw from a separate pool of potential character traits to regular Lords, called Spites. Each Spite offers a powerful campaign effect and battle ability. Chaos Invasion Revamp. Don't like Chaos rocking up and kicking down your sandcastle, in Mortal Empires you can now turn Chaos Invasion's difficulty level down. Enjoy the challenge, bit of a masochist, turn it up. Settlement Abandonment. Included by popular demand, it's now possible for players to abandon settlements that they own. Settlements marked for abandonment will be raised at the start of the player's next turn. The Wild Hunt. Orion's officers have received a Wild Hunt facelift, complete with new names and effects. Furthermore, the duration of a wild hunt, when called, is now more clearly signposted. Speaking of facelifts, we've rebalanced a few skills. Wood Elves have, predictably, had some changes. Firstly, all Wood Elf Lords have had their blue line changed to align it more with the existing Warhammer 2 skill trees. Meanwhile, Orion's got himself a new unique skill line, as does Durthu. Over in the Dwarfen camp, Ungrim's being nerfed. His skill Slayer King now grants plus 5 melee attack to Slayers instead of plus 10. And they may be dead, but that hasn't saved them from being nerfed. The Vampire Count skill Dark Pact now grants plus 5 leadership whilst attacking, which is down from plus 15. That's campaigns out of the way, let's take a look at battles. First up is a new tool for performance tracking. Mousing over a unit's kill counter now provides two additional stats, damage dealt and damage value. Next, we shot some arrows at a bush and watched what happened. That's why we can now safely say that arrows and other projectiles can briefly pass through trees after being fired. This significantly reduces instances of units firing weapons into trees that are just a few feet in front of them. Talking of trees, we rented out a forest and did a whole bunch of tests to see what could realistically hide behind a decent sized birchwood. Infantry and cavalry, of course. Chariots, sure. Ground-based multi-entity monstrous infantry, just about. Monsters? Too big. Flying units? They're flying, not hiding. War machines? Too big, too loud, no hiding. 
artillery pieces. General rule of thumb, too cumbersome and can't be hidden. There are exceptions where exceptions make sense, like bolt throwers, for example. Racing behaviors and entity collision rules have had a bit of a rethink too. Characters and units are generally sturdier on their feet. It's now harder on average to pull through units attempting to pin you in place. Meanwhile, some of the factions and Lord effects have had a little spruce up. We've removed Helmengorst's plus 13 charge bonus for corpse cart units and added a lesser raised dead bound spell, corpse cart and mortis engine units. Gorst's lords will now get plus 15 armor for zombie units. Likewise, we've removed Archer and the Everchosen's plus 10 leadership bonus for Chaos Warriors and added plus 3% weapon and missile strength per veterancy rank for all units. Mazdamundi now gets all the benefits of being a second generation slan. Dretch gets better effects and an undercity in Crookback Mountain. And Malagor's starting region no longer causes vampiric attrition. Check out the patch notes for more faction and lord effects. That's all the fun stuff out of the way, now let's have a quick look at a few bug fix highlights. Where battle is concerned, we've mostly fixed a whole bunch of units not counting towards unit caps, or units counting when they shouldn't. This includes, but isn't limited to, Vampire Coast Fleet Captains, Marauder Horsemen, Deck Droppers, and more. In the campaign, ambush battles in Old World Mountain Choke Points will no longer use a Dark Elf themed map, and we fixed rare script breaks that were causing some features not to work. As always, take a look at the patch notes for full details. And that's our time. Don't forget to purchase your copy of the Twisted and Twilight Lords pack for new units, legendary lords, and more. Finally, check the description for a link to the full patch notes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.